1340 96.5 KVGC. Topping the news today, Amador County has issued a tough criticism of the legal agreement intended to address illegal waste discharges at Mule Creek State Prison. In a comment letter issued Wednesday by the Amador County Council's office, while supportive of issuing of the administrative order, says that the order does not go far enough to address the prison's discharges into Mule Creek, which has triggered a lawsuit from the county to enforce the Clean Water Act. Among the issues called out by the county, the settlement order only addresses waste spills that occur during dry months of the year and fails to fully address all the sources of pollution caused by the prison including its stormwater system, spray field disposal system, and industrial waste from the prison's industries. The county also says the agreement does not outline sufficient penalties to be enforced should the prison fail to address the order. Following years of complaints about Mule Creek Prison's violation of the Clean Water Act through various discharges of wastewater, stormwater, and industrial waste, Amador County filed a lawsuit earlier this year intending to force action by the State Regional Water Quality Board against the prison. The agreement criticized by the county yesterday was part of that settlement for the lawsuit. Well, the Calaveras County Health Officer and County Air Pollution Control District issuing a joint air quality advisory to notify the public of the potential for poor air quality conditions primarily due to smoke from the salt fire in Calaveras and various lightning caused fires around the state. Now areas of smoke may affect Calaveras County from the lower foothills into the higher county area, or excuse me, high country area, dependent upon wind direction until the fires are extinguished. Now in the evening, smoke tends to move downhill, becoming more concentrated in lower, lower elevation areas, including the foothills and lower river drainage basins. In the afternoon and early evening hours, conditions may improve as smoke rises. Smoke contains very tiny particles that can be inhaled deep into your lungs. While all people may experience varying degrees of symptoms, the more sensitive individuals, such as young aged and those with respiratory conditions, are at greatest risk of experiencing more aggravated symptoms. Remember, if you can see or smell smoke, avoid all unnecessary outdoor activities. For more info, call the Calaveras Air Pollution Control District, 754-6588, or Calaveras County Public Health. And the Citizens Activist Group, No Casino in Plymouth, has issued a statement critical of Governor Newsom's recent signing of a compact with the Ion Band of Miwok Indians to allow the operation of a casino on 220 acres of tribal land in the city of Plymouth and calls on the state to reverse its decision. The statement is the latest round in a years-long legal battle the No Casino Group has waged against the Ion Band's planned casino. No Casino cited its two ongoing legal challenges, one from 2018 and a new lawsuit filed last month challenging the decision by the Federal Department of Interior's Bureau of Indian Affairs to take 220 acres of land into federal trust and thus creating a sovereign reservation. No Casino called on Newsom to withdraw his approval of the gaming compact signed on August 3rd and for the state legislature to withhold approval of the agreement. The compact approved earlier this month would allow the Ion Band to operate up to 1,200 slot machines, card and table games, as well as off-track horse race betting. Both No Casino in Plymouth and Amador County have filed several lawsuits to try and block the proposed casino since plans were first announced in 2006, but the courts have consistently found in favor of the tribe over the years. Well, two Lodi residents were cited by Amador Sheriff's deputies for possession of a large amount of methamphetamine. According to reports, around 10 o'clock yesterday morning, a deputy spotted a blue Chevy pickup truck traveling on Highway 49 with no license plates. The deputy conducted a stop and, in talking with the occupants of the vehicle, discovered the driver was on searchable probation out of San Joaquin County and his driver's license was suspended. The deputy searched the vehicle and discovered about six grams of methamphetamine between the pair. The driver and passenger were both cited for various charges, including meth. Now, in California, possession of methamphetamine without the intent to sell is only a misdemeanor. 
Yesterday's stop was the sixth methamphetamine citation or arrest for methamphetamine the Sheriff's Department has made this month alone. Well, to help ward off any scammers, Medicare has released information on what you should expect from a contact tracing call. Now, if you've been in close contact with someone who tested positive for COVID-19, you may be contacted by a contact tracer or public health worker from your state or local health department. This is in an effort to help slow the spread of the disease. Now, here's what to know if you get a call. A contact tracer may call to let you know you may have been exposed to someone with COVID-19. All information you share with the contact tracer, like who you've been in contact with and your recent whereabouts, is all confidential. You may be asked to self-quarantine for 14 days. This means staying at home and monitoring your health and maintaining social distances from others. Or you may be asked to monitor your health and just watch for symptoms of COVID-19. Also, be aware of scammers pretending to be COVID-19 contact tracers. Legitimate tracers will never ask for your Medicare number. They will never ask for financial information. They will not ask for financial compensation or money. They won't ask for your Social Security number, bank account information, salary information, or credit card numbers. If someone calls you and asks for personal information such as this during a contact tracing interview, hang up and report it to authorities immediately. Well, with the new school year now underway in Amador and Calaveras, 4-H, America's largest youth development organization, geared up for another year of learning too. 4-H offers educational learning experiences where young people, age 5 to 19, can learn by doing. To help continue learning during these times of COVID, 4-H program reps in Amador and Calaveras have put together seven multi-county virtual 4-H project series. Using 4-H curriculum, the following projects will be offered, beginning 4-H, Cooking 101, Food Preservation, Mindful Health, Experiencing Mindfulness, Money Talks, and Outdoor Adventures. Well, there is a one-time fee required for enrollment in unlimited projects during the program year, which ends next June. To learn more about the projects, their start and end dates, and how to enroll, visit ucanr.edu. And that's uh, just the letter U, C-A-N-R, dot E-D-U. Or kids, you can come to Uncle Jim's class <laughs> on, uh, on Money Matters, and I'll tell you... Money Talks. Yeah, I'll tell you what it says. I'll give you some useful advice. It says, save me, kids, save. Money talks and beep walks. That's all you need to know, kids. Know that for the rest of your life. Calaveras County's cooling centers opened again today. Copperopolis, San Andreas, Angels, and Valley Springs. The uh, Jackson Cooling Center will be closed today. However, it will open again on Saturday and be open through next Thursday at the Jackson Civic Center. Uh, again, those wishing to visit the uh, cooling centers in either Amador or Calaveras must strictly abide by COVID-19 prevention guidelines, including practicing social distancing and wearing face coverings, all to reduce the spread of COVID-19. And the uh, bridge at the Amador County, El Dorado County line, Tyler Road, closed. Closed. Uh, looks like here... Um, the road, Tyler Road, at the uh, bridge at the Amador El Dorado County line closed starting yesterday at 10.45 a.m. until further notice to be determined. So closed as of yesterday morning with no open date in sight. And that's a look at local news on a gold country. Thursday morning from the KVGC News Center. I'm J.D. And I'm Jim Geedy reporting. Remember, for the latest news, traffic, and weather 24 hours a day, you can always visit our website. That's kvgcradio.com.